has apologized after facing major backlash for comments regarding the controversy surrounding Rachel Kirkconnell. Hey guys, welcome back to another shared news from home. We have got to talk about Chris's statement, but before we get into it, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. As always, I'm your host Fiona Zaring, and today I'm joined by the wonderful Mariah Davis. Mariah, this is intense. There's a lot to unpack, so let's just dive right in. The backlash began after Chris did a sit-down interview with Bachelor Nation's very own Rachel Lindsay on Extra. Rachel asked Chris to address the controversy surrounding Rachel, specifically some newly resurfaced photos of Rachel that a Reddit user shared of her at a 2018 fraternity formal, which the user described as an antebellum plantation-themed ball. These pictures, of course, follow a series of accusations that have already been circling online about her alleged past social media behavior, as well as an allegation from a TikTok user who claimed to have been bullied by her in high school for liking black men. That, alongside a few other TikToks, have gone viral and led to a lot of debate within Bachelor Nation. Uh, Chris's statements during this interview to say upset fans is sort of an understatement. People were very upset. Let's take a quick look at part of their conversation. It's when not, you hold that under the lens. Look. It's not a good look. No, it's not a good, well, Rachel, is it a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021? It's because not a, a big good difference. look ever. Cause you're, she's celebrating well, the old South. She's cel if I went to that party, what would I represent I, at that party? So Mariah, I have to say, when I watched this interview, my jaw dropped. It wasn't Chris's best look, in my opinion. I mean, what is your reaction to that conversation? I had a very similar reaction. My jaw dropped. I was shocked because I feel like that's not the Chris Harrison that we all know and love. And this totally paints him in an entirely different way. I don't know if he's going to be able to recover. I, I appreciate when anybody delivers, you know, a heartfelt message and accepts their wrongs, but it's also like, well, he's Chris Harrison. He has to apologize, right? Like he has to deliver the perfect apology and you know, he didn't work on it alone. I mean, I can only imagine. So I was shocked to have, especially to see him kind of in a debate with Rachel Lindsay, no less, not only someone who has a unique understanding of really all of this, but a close friend of his. It's like, show some respect. I mean, this isn't a place for you to just share all of your opinions, regardless of what they are. I mean, you're a public figure for crying out loud. So I was completely shocked. I Again, I don't know if Chris is going to come back from this. Yeah, I have to say, I, you know, I watched it and then I rewound and then I watched it again and I did my best to try to like give him the, is he not explaining himself well? Like, what is he trying to say? And really picked apart the statements. And I just keep coming to the conclusion that he should have known better. He should have listened to Rachel. I can't imagine in that moment, knowing that you're a public figure and this is on TV, thinking that was the best course of action. It definitely was, you know, a, a, a huge mistake. Um, and I have to say there's been a lot of confusion, you know, bachelor contracts are so complicated. We know this, there's confusion on what they can speak on, when they can speak on it, you know, when or what they're allowed to say. So a lot of people I think have thought that her silence did have something to do with her contract and Rachel would know better than anyone what behind the scenes those contracts look like. So this kind of stood out to me. I thought that that may be a reason that she hasn't, you know, taken the time to address this. Uh, Rachel also said she agreed with Chris in the sense that there should be some understanding of like, quote, not everybody knows everything. And I think that that's what people are learning or learned in 2020 or started to learn, basically sort of explaining that there is a world in which Rachel isn't an expert in all of this, you know, she's taking the time to grow and learn over these last few years. But that's something that we would want to hear from her. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris explained to that point. And this poor girl, Rachel, who has just been thrown to the lions, I don't know how you are equipped when you have never done this before to be woke enough, to be eloquent enough, to be ready to handle this. And, and my guess is this woman needs a little time. He also added that he doesn't think it's incumbent upon the Bachelor franchise to 
speak out on everything that everyone wants to hear about on social media. And what I also found interesting is he did confirm that this will be discussed on the Women Tell All episode, but Rachel will not be there. He said, quote, we do get into it. Rachel was not there, so we didn't get into the Rachel of it all. But Rachel will have her time to speak and hopefully I will be there to have that debate with her and I will push her. So a lot of almost like contradictory statements layered into that. Basically, we know she won't be at Woman Tell All, but he's making it seem like there's a designated, you know, plan, time or place to have this discussion. I'm kind of wondering if the clue we can pick out from all of that is that maybe this will happen on After the Final Rose. I mean, what do you make of that statement, Mariah? Well, first of all, the fact that she wasn't at the Women Tell All kind of makes me think, like, well, did she win? Like, did you just tell us that that she's the one who made it to the end? When I first heard him say that, I was like, did he just give us the ultimate spoiler alert? Um, I hope that that's true. She does have to address it. I mean, and I know... She's got to be dying to. I feel like Rachel Lindsay touched on that. She was like, if this was you, you would want to, if you had this false narrative being stated about you, you would want to correct it. So I'm sure it's driving her crazy. I He didn't confirm nor deny any, you know, being held against or not being able to speak out against it contractually. Um, but something does need to be said. And I think the best move is for Bachelor, the Bachelor Nation to kind of get on top of it. And to kind of help give her that platform to speak her truth, because that's what we all want to hear. This 2020 was really the year for, these are all of the issues that go on in our world. You Maybe you weren't aware of them, and maybe you weren't aware that you were part of the problem, but now's the time to grow, to educate, and to be better. And I feel like what better way to continue moving forward in that direction than them presenting a platform for her to right her wrongs, to admit that she's grown, or to correct the narrative that could or could not be true. Yeah, I mean, listen, Bachelor, the show, the franchise has had, you know, a lot of times been called out for, you know, where they lack in these steps forward. And I think that the show really did try to right some of those wrongs. We've seen an incredibly diverse cast of women. We've finally gotten our first Black Bachelor. Doesn't mean that it didn't take way too long to get here, but with all of the steps they've taken, it seems like for this season's narrative to be completely derailed, Um, by something so controversial, Rachel needs to, at some point, offer some sort of an explanation or she's never going to be able to to take back the narrative. That's just the nature Mm -hmm. of the social media beast and world we're living in. Um, I do want to circle back to what you said because I thought the exact same thing when he said she's not going to be after the final rose with all these rumors um, of her winning, of her, you know, going very far. They're unescapable on social media. I wonder if that's sort of why he waded into this messy territory and tried to come to her defense. I feel like that's got to be related. It makes sense that this is why Chris would kind of come to her defense. If she is the girl who Matt chooses in the end, she kind of becomes the face of the Bachelor franchise. Anyone who is the Bachelor or Bachelorette or the one who walks away with the final rose, they become the newest face. So yeah, in regards to the best image, I see why he is making it, is making a big attempt to defend her, but he just did it in such poor taste. And I feel like he got overly passionate and he didn't just speak with reason to kind of put out some of the fire. He really just added fuel to it. Right, right. Um, Which, of course, as we've been discussing, led to the need to issue an apology. So he did um, release a lengthy statement apologizing on his Instagram. In part, he wrote, To my Bachelor Nation family, I will always own a mistake when I make one, so I am here to extend a sincere apology. He continued saying, Yesterday I took a stance on topics which I should have been better informed. While I do not speak for Rachel Kirkconnell, my intentions were or just simply ask for grace and offering her an opportunity to speak on her own behalf. He continued explaining he realized he has caused harm by wrongly speaking in a manner that perpetuates racism. For that, I am so deeply sorry. He also specifically apologized to Rachel Lindsay for not listening to her better on a topic she has firsthand understanding of. 
And of course, he ended his post humbly thanking members of Bachelor Nation who reached out to hold him accountable and promised to everyone in the franchise we'll do better moving forward. So Mariah, what are your thoughts on this apology? It definitely, you know, covered the bases, added a little more context to the messy sentiment he very poorly was trying to convey. How does this sit with you? As far as apologies go, this definitely satisfied me. I mean, because I was really upset. As I said before, this casts Chris Harrison in an entirely different light. And this is not the Chris Harrison we all know and love. So upon reading that, I was like, you know, yeah, he did cover all of the bases. It seemed really heartfelt. I love when people just own up to their mistakes. And I love that he is saying thank or showing gratitude to those who are holding him accountable. I think there's a strong possibility Chris Harrison didn't write this all on his own, which is totally fine. I too understand wanting to get the point across the best way as possible. So I, I appreciate the apology. I also really love that he specifically apolo apologized to Rachel because I was kind of hurt for her watching that. She's been so passionate about BLM and what that platform means to her and her specific understanding of it. And for him to debate her was just really hard to watch. So I appreciated the apology. I, I don't know if the rest of Bachelor Nation or the rest of the world is going to appreciate it the same. I think that's just going to vary. I hope he can come back from this. But again, I'm not sure if it's easy for people to come back after just stating that kind of nonsense in the day and age that we're in. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think that, you know, accountability is the big thing that people are asking for. If you've made mistakes, hold yourself accountable. In a way, that's sort of where this entire conversation originated from. When is Rachel or what is Rachel going to say? How many of these allegations you know, are true? What is the context? <laughs> so it sort of just takes me back. It all kind of comes full circle. It'll be interesting to see, you know, fans continued reactions to Chris's statement, Chris's interview, and of course, the Rachel of it all. You guys, we want to know your take on all of this. Are you hoping to hear from Rachel? Was Chris's apology enough for you? Let us know down in the comments. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. As always, I'm your host, Fiona Zaring. I was joined by the wonderful Mariah Davis. If you want to come say hi, our social handles are on the screen right now. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.